South Africa and a very warm welcome to you. Welcome to Afternoon Express. I'm Jeannie Dean. And I'm Danilo Acquisto. Now, as you know, in our country of late, there's been a lot of negativity around. So right here on Afternoon Express, you're going to see a lot of our tonsils because we're giving you a nice big fat, juicy <laughs> dose of the best medicine, and that has to be laughter. We've got Stuart Taylor, the absolute legend, joining us in the loft today. He's going to make us laugh back at 2015, the year that actually was hilarious, if we take a look at it, right? Yeah, absolutely. It didn't seem so funny at the time. Yeah. <laughs> We're also going to be looking at a very interesting form of stress relief, which is laughter yoga, which I reckon we get enough of every single day on the show. <laughs> so, I mean, that's going to be hysterical, so you definitely don't want to miss that. And then also, don't forget, today we have Tom Eaton joining us in the loft to take a look at why satire is so important for our country. He's also an author too, and I think it's important for us as a country to learn to laugh at ourselves when it comes to going through that healing process. And so we're very excited to have him in the loft with us today too. And in the kitchen, somebody better call the fire department because Bonnie's <laughs> cooking with an open flame. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to it, I'm Bonnie Booley. Today we'll be taking a look at a new comedy film out at the movies called Popo for my darling. Mm -hmm. And with me are the key cast members, Dion Lotz and Deirdre Volato. Welcome to The Loft. Thank you. Thank you very Hello. much. Congratulations on your film. Thank yeah, you. It's been doing just, very well. Yeah. Awesome, Absolutely. awesome. Selling Can't wait out. to hear about it. Mm. You just keep those films coming. Hey? I have I'm to so keep jealous. them going. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Look forward to our next one. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Clem Pedro, our new resident chef and food stylist. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. We're going here. to Mexico today. Uh, we're keeping with the cheerful, positive um, recipes today. And what's more cheerful uh -huh. and positive than a mealy? Bright and yellow. Millie! I mean, exactly, millies. So I love do, millies. Who does, who does not love a millie? <laughs> so we're going to do a Mexican spin in it, so Mexican charred mm -hmm. millies. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be amazing. A few awesome. tricks in there and the open clay. Awesome. Why You've not? always got a trick up your sleeve. Have to. <laughs> and pop over to our website, afternoonexpress.co.za, for the full recipe and shopping list. Let's head back to Dini on the couch. Thank you, Bonnie. Now, he was one of our very first guests on Afternoon Express last year, and today we're lucky to have him back in our couch, uh, on our couch, rather, at the start of a very, very new year. Having recently finished a run of his hilarious production at the Baxter, called 2015 in Review, we can't think of a better guest to give us a comedic look back on the past year than one of the country's best loved comedians, Stuart Taylor. Welcome to our loft again. Thank you very much, Jeannie D. Thanks for having me. Now, you You've had quite a year. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, you well, are 2015. So busy. <laughs> I, I try to be like you. This is my thing. You're my inspiration, Jeannie D. Oh, thank like, you. How, how busy can I be? I can be, <laughs> I can be Jeannie D. Busy, then oh. life will be complete. Oh, is that the measure? That's now? the measure. That's oh, the good. measure. That's I'm the measure. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's start off with that. Let's start off with Stuart Taylor, a year in review, basically. Yes. Your, I mean, what kind of, what was the inspiration behind that, and what kind of what did you what did you hammer on? Well, you know what? You can you can focus on the negative because let's be honest, 2015 was a very, very difficult year for most I know, I'm people. I'm sweating just thinking yes. about it. But here's the thing, you just focus on the positive, man. Focus on the cool things you did. I got to do something I've never done before. I got to shoot my very first movie. Yes. How cool is that to be Amazing. in a movie? Yes, for a comedian <laughs> as opposed to an actor. So that, that was very, very exciting for me. It's yeah. a movie called Finders Keepers, and yeah. it's out on the 24th of June. Uh, this year. Amazing. It was such a cool ensemble cast, just very, very funny people involved with it. Uh, and it, it, was, it, it was something that was very different. And I really Why enjoyed it. Why is it different? What's it about? Well, it's a, um, it's, it's sort of a, it, it's an action comedy. Um, that picture, by the way, was myself and the director, Maynard Crock. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's, it I mean, very Maynard's... good in leather. It was fabulous. Good did shot. I? Did mm. I? Thank you. That was my <laughs> character. My character loved wearing leather <laughs> all the time. And I get, sh I get shot. No. In the movie, I get shot in the leather jacket. They said to me, Stu, you're going to get shot in the leather jacket. I was like, guys, can't we shoot me? Like, because they How does it actually break it. work, though, in a movie? Like, what did they shoot you with? Like a little rubber bullet? No, here's, uh, no, it's not student protest. What <laughs> happens is they, they give you a squib. They give you a squib. So it's an actual like explosive. Like a little packet of tomato sauce. No, it's an actual explosive. So there's a no. guy pushing an explosive, and the jacket breaks. They break the leather jacket. No. They break a leather so jacket. So somebody goes, pow. With a fake gun. With a, with a real gun, shooting a blank. No. Do they really use real guns? It's on real set? guns. There's a guy called an armorer who comes on set. He was so cool. He's like an FBI agent. Yeah. And he's like, hey man, okay, we got the gun. You play Jackie, you use a Glock. And then he does like a whole and safety then, briefing and he shows it to you. And then and what so is cool. your reaction? Um, well, basically, an explosive is going off at your chest, <laughs> so you just react to that. <laughs> is it painful? It's a little bit, it's like someone punching you in the chest. 
Amazing. So yes. it makes acting easy then, if you've got something to react to. Well, it makes act I don't know if act acting is ever easy. For me, the acting started when I arrived on set, because as, as you know, I'm a comedian, not an actor, so yeah. I had to just act like I know what is going on. Yeah. And not make a fool of myself. That was my big thing. Stu, just don't make a fool of yourself. Don't but don't you yourself. think that is a common thread throughout the entertainment industry? Like, <laughs> a lot of people are just kind of busting just hold, it. Just hold the We're pose. We're all winging it. Busk it. <laughs> like, this is... Just, just don't let them know that you don't know. Does That's anyone the rule. ever That's actually the know what they're doing? Not at all. I'll tell you one of the best <laughs> ones. I'm on set, right? So, yeah. <laughs> so, I play a dad. I play a dad, but the guy who plays my son is, like, maybe two or three years uh, younger than me. Yeah. So, that's makeup to make me look older. Not they a lot of makeup. A lot of makeup not a lot of makeup. <laughs> so, so the first things first, uh, Mr. Taylor, to makeup, please. And I'm there, and the woman does the makeup. We're having a lovely chat during makeup. Yes. At the end, she says, Stu, can I get a photo? Now, yeah. this happens to you every day, Jeannie. Jeannie D, can I get every a photo? Every day. I walk down the street, Stu, can I get a photo? Gotta be camera you know ready. What I mean. yes. so, uh, so she says, Stu, can I get a photo? I said, of course, of course, come, come, come. So she takes out her iPad. And I'm like, uh, no, 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 come be in the photo with me, obviously. You yeah. know what I mean. And then she just looked at me like, no, it's for continuity. I must make the same makeup again tomorrow. <laughs> That, that was brilliant. awkward. <laughs> were you shooting in Cape Town? <laughs> we were. We were shooting in Cape Town. We were shooting the, 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 the actual scenes, the shootouts we were doing at, at, uh, at the harbour, at Hout Bay Harbour. Lovely. So the fact that we were shooting guns on a Monday morning just made it sound like a normal Monday Stunning. morning in, Har in Hout Bay Harbour. Now, obviously, today we're discussing satire and all of that. Now, I yes. want to know about some of, the, some of the topics you focused on in your year in review. Yes, so we did the show, 2015 yeah. in review. It actually just almost it just we finished, finished there. Uh, in fact, tonight, I feel, I feel weird. I feel like I should be going to the theatre tonight because yeah. we were running from, from uh, Wednesdays, I think, or Tuesdays. So I don't for those know, of us who missed it, If what you the missed points? it, shame on you. That's I all know, I have to say. I'm very uh, but we, we, we spoke a lot of things. We spoke about a lot of things. It was, it was basically a look back at the highlights of yeah. 2015, the lowlights of 2015, and sure. often the lack of lights in 2015, thanks <laughs> to our friends at ESCOM. Uh, what was the one of the cool things they gave us? They gave us scheduled load shedding. Yes. Uh, where you could look at the fridge and know when the, know when the lights were going to go yeah. off, know when the lights were coming off. But I must be honest, many times I was there, <laughs> just like, it's been two and a half hours, it's been three hours, the lights are still up. It's been four and a half hours, this is ridiculous. Yeah. And then I open the curtains and all my neighbours' lights are on. And then I'm like, <laughs> I think we ran out of units. <laughs> I love that. Yes, but it's so ESCOM, ESCOM was a lot of fun. Uh, there were all sorts of weird things that happened. Uh, Robert Mugabe falls, you remember Feb? Robert Mugabe, that was a big Well, everything hashtag. must have fallen in Everything in did fall, but Ro Robert Mugabe actually fell. He's the one who kicked it off, he fell. <laughs> Except I saw, that, I saw that hashtag and I was like, Robert Mugabe falls. <gasps> was there a coup? Did some people take over? <laughs> and that was, that was the one part of my brain. And the other part of my brain was like, oh, Robert Mugabe falls. Did yes. this guy just rename Vic Falls? <laughs> Robert Mugabe falls. Because he would, he would do that. He would, he would. He would. <laughs> yes. So, uh, so that, was, that was part of the show. We looked at the, at the top fails of 2015. Yeah. <laughs> and there were many. There were many. There was AshleyMadison.com. You know the website, Ashley Madison? I know, Mad but apparently a lot of people on Ashley Madison weren't actually caught out for actually cheating. They were just conversing was, with each it other. Was fake they yeah, were it was fake cheating. profiles. It was fake profiles. Yeah. That's their slogan, by the way. You saw it. Life's short, have an affair. Until your partner catches you. Yeah, then, your then life, life is really long. <laughs> it's either very short or it's very long. <laughs> but yeah, it's the one thing I did right as a husband in 2015 was not be on that site. And I bring it up as often as possible. Okay, well, there's as, a win. Exactly. As married men, we love it when other husbands are in trouble. That's the thing that makes us <laughs> look good. So I bring it up regularly. Honey, at least I wasn't doing that, eh? Yeah. And I wasn't. I mean, and it's, it's true. They were, as you say, they, was, uh, they said there were a lot of fake profiles. Rubbish. There were real profiles on that site. I saw I'm they sure. were real. I mean, I, I, when I say so, I, I was... It was, I went for research purposes. I didn't, I, now, I didn't go then. I didn't well, you go have now. to research your material, Exactly, of course, and I did, I promise, I did not go research. then. Research. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't go then. Okay, I'd so you finished it. I did not go then. We were load shedding. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, you had no yes. battery on your laptop. <laughs> so, you were, you've just finished up at the Baxter, and yes. now you're going to be heading back to the Baxter, actually. Are you directing, or? I'm directing a one-man show by a yeah. young com co comedian called Dalen Oliver. It's yeah. called I Came, I Taught, I Left. I'm so, so proud of this project. He's, he's, he's Dalen's been around in the circuit for maybe four or five years, but he's such an ambitious young comic. He's a very, a very funny comic, but one of the hardest working comics I know. Yeah. Uh, so we're heading to the Baxter for the season nine February. You must 
must not miss it. If you are in Cape Town, if yes. you're not in Cape Town, fly down, use, you know, drive down, do whatever you can, get to the back. <laughs> it's called I came, I thought I left. And otherwise, I'm going to kind of spend 2016 um, trying to be as, as busy as what Jeannie D is. Well, Stuart Taylor, you are hysterical. And I've just got to say thank you because I've got a six pack after that. Oh. <laughs> I love you. Thank you so much. Stay right where you are. After the break, Bonnie makes us a Mexican inspired Millie, which is the perfect side dish for a bride this weekend. And we chat to the lead cast members of South Africa's latest comedy film, A Paw Paw for Me Darling, which is a comedic look at post 94 South Africa through the eyes of a dog. We'll be right back. Salati Plantation Select adds subtle sweetness to toffees, caramel, bran muffins, or sprinkled into a spicy curry. Salati, always good, always sweet. Great to have you back with us on SABC3 Afternoon Express. Clem, Pedro and I are about to get kicking on those millies. Now, I love, I'll tell you what it is about millies that I absolutely love. They remind me of my childhood. Because there was always that mama who came around our street with them in a bowl on her head. And she was always wearing like a colorful scarf and selling millies. You gotta give me your best impersonation. How was it? What did it sound like? No! Come on. It's, not just it's gotta be off thing. the cuff. It's and you gotta know be what? off the cuff. I think millies are like South Africa's national vegetable. Don't yeah, you think so? Yeah, they are. I think they're amazing. And they're just lovely. And I also, I also love that original Millie, that long green one. What are they called? Uh, the, the, Millies. Exactly. Yeah. And now they, they're in stores. You can get are they them. In stores you don't now? have to go to the markets anymore. You can actually get them in the stores called Green Millies, oh, packaged. Wow, wow. And they're amazing. These okay. yellow ones as well. These are the ones we're all used I also to. I love these. The ones that have been in stores for years. And you can eat them raw. And that's about these Millies. If they're fresh. They're super sweet, and you can eat them raw. Yeah. As they start to get older, those sugars turn into starches. Oh. Get them fresh. That's the best thing. Right. Another way to tell if they are fresh, if you look at the I bottom. I must tell Jeannie that. She's going to want to know that. Does she love raw millies as well? No, because she hates starch. Okay, there we go. Okay, so if you look at the millie at the bottom, if it's nice and white, okay. no, there's no colors, then no browns, you know it's fresh. And also, try when you can to get the husks on. That way they retain the moisture in the millie. Mm. And also, it works for our recipe today. Okay, wonderful. So we're going to use the husks as a handle for our Mexican-inspired Mexican one. Wow, okay. So I've got one for you. As you can see, I've, instead of pulling them off, I've like kind of lifted them up a bit. Okay. And yours is also there. So we're going to take two. Okay. And we're going to kind of secure it. You can go double, not go around. Don't tie them too tight. Can I make tight. a little plait? You can, oh, no, definitely. No, 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 we're tying it around. Who got it? Just like that. Just to secure it. Okay, Absolutely. Cool. So um, these are the, the normal yellow millies we're all accustomed to. Mm -hmm. If you can find the white millies, this will work even better as well. Oh, yeah? But get them fresh. They have to be fresh. That way you know they're going to be sweet. Okay. Okay, okay. cool. So you've got it all braided, and that's going to be our handle. Yours looks nice. After we've charred it. Okay. Oh, you know what? It's yeah. I'm very competitive, sorry. There we go. Swap. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> look at your good job. <laughs> Salted water, and that's going to go in. Pop that in. Okay. So now we're going to... Blanch these mm -hmm. just to cook them. But like mm -hmm. we said, if they're fresh, go straight onto the coals, onto the fire, onto the, on the pan, just to get them going. You can right. retain that sweetness uh -huh. by cooking them directly on the flame without getting them in the water. Oh, wow. But we're just playing it safe wow. today, so we're going to boil them in some salted can water. Can you grill them as well? Absolutely. Okay, awesome. And we're going to talk about that later when we actually char them. Okay, okay. Definitely. So, um, in some um, salted water, yeah. always salted water, okay. and also don't overcook them. They yes, lose all their flavor, yes. so maximum they lose five all minutes. Their personality. Yeah. Exactly. What are you yeah. eating then? Mm, mm. Exactly. Five minutes mm -hmm. in there, and all we're looking for the color starts to change, and you can actually feel the kernels start. Um, they feel a bit firm. Yeah. And once that happens, get them out. Let them steam to get all the ex excess moisture out, okay. and that's when you get ready for the fun part, for all the awesome. flames and the action. Awesome. You know what? The, the next part, the exciting bits. Yes. Okay, so yeah, um, once again, if your corn starts to catch um, the husks, and if you're you make busy, sure your husks don't start getting into the water. Because they're gonna get soft and they're gonna start falling yes, off. Yes. If you're working on a gas flame and your husks start to burn, just make sure you pull it away. Yeah. We're not looking for any fire hazards. <laughs> yeah. So keep an eye on them. Uh -huh. And um, that's, that's basically all you need to do for the first part. Just let it go five minutes, and that's all you have to do. Awesome. All the details are on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. Let's head over to the couch with Danilo. I was so perturbed the other day when a friend of mine said to me that he loves to eat millies. 
What's a Millie? It's a Millie, man. The new hit Afrikaans film, A Popo for My Darling, directed by Kuis Roots and based on the genre Khoisan novel, is currently enjoying a successful run at cinemas across the country. It's a story filled with humor, pathos, and razor sharp social commentary on the life of an Afrikaans family and their mongrel dog in a rundown suburb. The film deals uh, with their desperate and sometimes clumsy and strange attempts to adapt and survive the post-1994 era in a very humorous uh, life. All of these seen through the eyes of the family dog, Chaka. Joining us on the couch today are two of the lead cast members, Dion Lotz, as well as Deirdre Voliter. Very cool to have you guys with us today in the loft. You're already thank laughing you, because you. I got your author's name wrong already. <laughs> I know it's a thing. Hi, oh, maybe we should call it Emily for my darling. Emily for, it's my, Emily darling. for my darling. And then we can do it like then that. Then we can do it like that. The Typical next movie. South African movie. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Guys, a purple for my darling's done so well. Congratulations. It's doing well. What the, the heck? Some of the movie theatres have been sold out. It's well, crazy. Yeah, so it's Within five days, over a million rand, which is great yeah. for a South African movie that's fantastic. It's amazing. You would have heard a lot of people say that the Afrikaans market are very, very dedicated to to, to their their their, their uh, the theatre scenes as well as the film scenes and things. But and this music film, as well, yeah. This film has taken on every sort of generation of South Africa and every different genre, and it's really done itself so well. What is it about this film that you think South Africans are taking to so well in the, well, in I the think cinemas? It, sh it shows you that people love comedy, yeah. but mm -hmm. it's also not it's not slapstick comedy. It's real comedy. It's real lives. It's you know it's as as you. You say there's a bit of it's black humor which is nice it's and a satire and yeah. also i think what makes this movie so unique as you said is that it takes place from the perspective of a dog and not just any dog he is a real <laughs> pavement special of note oh yes and this dog is absolutely mortified by the antics of his family of the mm. people he has to live with he just wants to die they yeah. embarrass him so <laughs> he just can't deal with this and so you have his story and also at the same time he falls in love with this french poodle who happened to get lost in danville because the story is set in a fictitious suburb called danville mm -hmm. and this dog the 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 French poodle is from Waterkloof, and he falls in love with her. And so you've got his story, at the same time you've got the human story, mm. but he's mm. commenting on them all the time. Yeah, it's yeah. like yeah. And I think story. people, a lot of people that I've spoken to say they, they know people like this or they mm. can relate to somebody. Mm. You know, mm. we're not, we, we, we're certainly not out to prove that, uh, you know, Afrikaner people are poor or, mm. you know, have bad language or mm. Mm. are common. <laughs> not at all. We're just sl showing a slice of life that, yes. that there are people like this and we must enjoy. Absolutely. And, and uh, you know, we, we have a good laugh at it. And I'm uh, sure. One thing, obviously, everyone's going to want to know is it sounds like we're calling this an Afrikaans film, a popo for my darling. Yeah. Um, can any South African, English speaking, a little Absolutely. soti like me, go totally. and check totally. out the film and enjoy it? If you can read subtitles, you can watch it. And yeah. you will understand the humour. And I think that's yes. the big thing. You'll, you'll, you'll it's South African humour. The visuals. I think as a yeah. South African, if you're a South African, you'll get the movie. Yeah. Because it, it, it's poking <laughs> fun at... You, you're poking fun at South Africans. You'll understand the South African situations, at the scenario. but yes, mm. the the subtitles and also, I mean, the the language is easy to understand. The story yeah. the story speaks for itself on screen. And, it the, does. and the swearing is Afrikaans or English the same? So you get it. <laughs> <laughs> no, not them. much of that. We learn them in all eleven languages. <laughs> we always know. We do, yeah. aren't we? That's the first thing we do. <laughs> South African films generally, people go uh, sort of their hairs get ready to stand up on the back of their neck, so they want to know is this film going to make it or not? And, and there's this huge tension around will South African films make it? This film itself has got a hugely star-studded cast. Yeah. It's very exciting that you guys have done mm. that. Plus, not only has it got a star-studded cast, you've also told it in an interesting way, like we said, Correct. with the story it's coming really from the dog itself. But it's, it's, as I said, it's real. Uh, it's believable characters. Yeah. Um, there's a picture of the cast. I mean, yeah, Sandra Prinsloo, you know, Vili <laughs> Estres and but also Deirdre. You it's, it's just the reality of these people and to work with them as an ensemble. Yeah. Mm. And it's a story that, that people can as we say, laugh at, but it's also, you know, we're telling it so honestly yeah. that uh, it makes, it's, it's quality. And that's, mm. I think, what, that's the difference for me between different South African films. Mm. You know, when you have a quality movie and the audience go and watch and say, wow, because so many people don't want to go and watch mm. Afrikaans music or South African yeah. music, uh, I think it's films, be slapstick, because yeah. it's, it's slapstick. Uh, this is this is a good movie. It starts with a script. Mm -hmm. Look, the Jean Khoisan book was oh, a absolutely. was a bestseller at the time that it was published, and many people will tell you that it's their f one of their favorite Afrikaans books mm. of all time. So mm. if you're starting with a good quality script, mm. um, yeah, you, you, you're there. Was you're with there. The and then you have a director. Uh, of course, you know, like Chris Roots. Absolutely. Um, he's, 
the best. What, he, I mean, how many movies has he made now? This is his 65th I mean, you know, movie. He knows what he's, he's doing. So, yeah. so that's why you could have the cast that you have. Because when Koos Roots phones people like Sandra Prinsloo, Brumilda van Rensburg, I mean, even David Minard plays a cameo role. And the, he gets the star-studded cast that he has mm. because of who he is mm. and the reputation yeah. he has very, in the industry. So true. he does, yeah. he yeah. delivers a quality movie. Exactly. Mm. We were discussing earlier on, obviously, on the show, the whole point is our country needs to start to laugh at itself. And this film's doing it. it. We've does. seen a lot of comedies <laughs> come out about yeah. the South African stereotypes. You guys must have so many moments that you just look back on in the production process that were your absolute favourites. Is there a scene or a moment during the production that you, 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 you'll never let go of? I mean, that scene that is on now, the fight scene, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that was hysterical. Oh. And us getting yeah. into the policeman and, you know, we just... And we, as you know, in film, you have to mm -hmm. repeat some scenes. Yes. So it's something that happens all the time. and you It's like a baby playing and again and again and again and again and again. Yeah, totally. So yeah. we had a lot of fun. We had a I'm lot sure. of laughs on set. I mean, you were commenting the other day that, uh, you know, every time you do something, I look at her, she looks at me, and yeah. there's just something magical that happens within mm. that. And you end up laughing about it, and, totally. and then you get serious again, because that's it, what it requires. It yeah. is hard sometimes. It was very hard to keep a straight face at times, because you see someone doing something in front of you, and you go, no. No, you, <laughs> no, you did not just do yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. and I'm pretty sure so many friendships came out of this, and I'm very oh, yeah. excited to have you guys here, and it's very exciting South Africans are going to go check out the film. So I just oh, encourage must. all South Africans to make sure you go and support the local film. And it's not one of those films that go, you go check out one of those small cinemas in the Dortby. It's at all of the really mm. big cinemas, it is. and it's beating it is. a lot of the American films, which yeah. is so exciting. Yeah, well, that's, that's what we need. That's what we need to yeah. embrace South African film and go yeah. and watch and support. Awesome. Totally. So I'll go and laugh at you guys at the cinemas Thanks. very, very soon. Nice Please to have you on the Express today. Thank you. After the break, South Africa makes sure you don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Fresh pack. Goodness comes naturally. Welcome back to Afternoon Express live on SABC3. Now, laughter is the bridge between cultural, racial, and language boundaries. It's the one thing that all humans have in common. No matter where you were, or where you, where you are, or where you were born, or how old you are, nothing puts us in a better mood than a good laugh. Now, laughter, it, laughter yoga is a phenomenon which started in India and has spread like wildfire across the globe. What it is all about and why should we give it a try? Well, we have laughter yoga instructor Kimon from Kiki Toga, laughter yoga to teach us all about it. Welcome to the loft. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Hey, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Hello, Bonnie. Thank you so yeah, much. Welcome. Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> laughter. Okay, laughter is the best medicine. That's why I look so young. I'm always laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So, but in terms of l laughing for as a profession, what what's that all about? I mean, what's the difference between just laughing every day and fake laughter or <laughs> getting yourself into a, a um, laughter? Body, and are the benefits the same? Um, well, it is exactly the same. Um, Newsflash, fake laughter and real laughter is so good for you. So you really have to take the time to laugh at everything, everything possible, because there's a lot of stress out there and a lot of stress busters that want to come uh -huh. get you. Uh -huh. And um, personally, I decided I was working in the advertising industry. Ooh, lots of stress there. Yeah, and in yeah. fashion. And I took it upon myself to laugh. Okay. Because I thought, you know, people are suffering from a serious case of seriousness and we really need to, like, get over ourselves and laugh. And the benefits of laughter is huge. Um, Bonnie, you said yourself you're a yoga <laughs> lady. So you I am know, a yoga, I am a yoga. And you I'm know very how it interested. makes you feel? Yeah, it does. It makes me feel awesome. Yes. And I, I know a lot of people um, see yoga as a place where you go internal, you get very still, and they mm. take it very seriously. Sometimes it can get quite solemn. Yes. What's the difference with this? Because well, I mean, with laughter, laughter yoga, is crazy. We say enlighten up because laughter is the best medicine. Enlighten up. Okay. You know, like people always say, just take a deep breath. You know, you'll get over it. Now the reason is because when people are upset, they got short, shallow breathing. They're like, <laughs> you can see yeah. it from a mile away. Yeah, right, yeah. And what's happening is that there's no oxygen going into their lungs, and all that stale carbon dioxide is leading to stress and toxins being built up. That's why often when you're stressed out, you get sick. Right. So right. in yoga, you're very peaceful. You're taking short inhalations mm -hmm. and long exhalations. But we can shortcut that with laughter. So just. <laughs> Self 
phone laughter yeah. and sunscreen laughter? <laughs> well, basically, so in a laughter yoga class, we use laughter exercises, improvisation, uh -huh. to fake laughter, because fake laughter and real laughter has the same side effects on the body. The body doesn't know the difference. We're flushing the lungs, and we look so gorgeous uh -huh. doing it, uh -huh. and there's no buildup of stress. So cell phone laughter, I love to use in my classes, because there's daily stress on a cell phone. Yes. Good news, bad news, bad pictures, good pictures. You never know yeah. what's going to go yeah. on on that yeah. thing. So I find it really great to laugh with a <laughs> cell phone. Okay. And then sunscreen laughter, because with these hectic days, I wish we could actually have wind cream that could wear off the wind, uh -huh, you know, but uh -huh, uh -huh. I do sunscreen laughter because obviously the high cost of sunscreen and also that you always have to cover up. Even me, I'm a bit of a coconut girl, but I have to use So that laughter up. protects your skin, in other words. You know what it does? It reminds us because when I put on my laughter cream, something incredible happens. <laughs> no, you are glowing. You are glowing. Do you know what I'm really, I look very nervous right now. I'm a bit panicked because you're going to, you're about to make me do that. <laughs> national television she's about me making me do that okay let's just do it let's just do it okay I'm buddy okay. so um with a laughter class we always start out with a laughter come 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 you're doing it come with me come on us, come us. we always start so it's just I'm not me my come cream. on come on there's lots of laughter clubs all over the world and all over the world we start with the namaste laughter so putting your hands okay. together everybody out there we're gonna start with the <laughs> is that the is that the <laughs> 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 laughter is a sign of peace. So by doing yes, this, it is. we're being peaceful. There's no little bit of anxiety. No. This is a very, no, we're laughing no, with no, each other. This feels no, very comfortable. Very comfortable. Very comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> and our next laughter exercise is going to be getting our cell phones out. Okay, guys, okay. now I'm, I'm sorry to do this on national television, but we've got some bad news. So your face is very sad, very sad, very sad faces. Very good. Gloom and doom happening on this phone. Like in but Jan, when they're calling to say, you owe money. <laughs> <laughs> but then all of a sudden, something happens, I'm and the whole mood on the phone changes, and you get so excited. Yay! 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 Let's go down as well. I do. I oh. And every laughter yoga session, right, our affirmation right. is very oh, good. So very good. <laughs> This is fun. I feel like a telly Okay, let's go. do it. Right, okay, three. Okay, okay, okay. Very, very good. good. Very, very good. good. Yeah! Give yourselves a clap. <laughs> See, laughter wow. not actually makes you look good. It makes you feel good. How are you oh, feeling? I feel really amazing. You look amazing <laughs> as well. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's all of five minutes of this. That's very nice. In, in, they do the crow. In yoga, they do the crow. And then in laughter yoga, then they work on the crow's line. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, that makes sense, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's excellent. Um, some laughter sunscreen. So what we do, I've actually imported this all the way from Thank India. You. Please Ooh. pass it around some for you. to the people on the couch too. To the people on the couch, you get some sunscreen, you get some sunscreen, you all get Everyone some sunscreen. Everyone gets sunscreen. <laughs> so what we do is that we apply our laughter sunscreen liberally. Uh -huh. And we apply it everywhere, especially on those little okay. crow lines and oh, laughter lines. Yeah. Yeah. And it goes something like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, guys on the couch, Danilo, can you, can you see how you apply your sunscreen? <laughs> so basically, we take a different... This is funny. One of the dates you guys definitely do not want to miss out on this year, and it's one you have to add to your fashion calendar, and that is simply you cannot miss this year. It's the 2016 Met at Kenilworth Racecourse. That's something definitely not to laugh about. It's going to be awesome happening right here in Cape Town on the Saturday, the 30th of January. This year's theme is a rare blend, invoking unique combinations, surprising contradictions, and naturally collaborations. So let's see Jeannie's fashion house of choice, Michael Maven. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, Tom Eaton is a novelist, satirist, and a recognized voice in South African journalism. Tom rose to prominence as a popular humorous newspaper columnist, while his 2005 spoof novel, The De Villiers Code, became a national bestseller. He was also one of the founders of the groundbreaking satire website, hybo.com, and today he joins us to chat about humor and the power of satire. Welcome, Tom. Thank you very much. I must be honest, yours is 
is probably one of my favorite Twitter accounts to follow. Oh, good. Because you always seem to hit it right on the head. <laughs> like, well, if you hit it with a sledgehammer, you're probably <laughs> going to hit something. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd try. Okay, first of all, for, to start off with, yes. for our viewers, yes. what is your definition, I suppose, of satire and parody? Oh, um, God, I feel like I'm at school. I know. Um, <laughs> but no, uh, don't give the broader definition, yeah. your definition. So, basically, for me, satire is a, is a new piece of creative work. It can be anything, written, theatre, film, TV, whatever, which uses absurd, ludicrous kind of comedy to poke fun at whatever its target is. Yeah. Whereas parody would be taking something that already exists and then making it, you know, make, making fun of it. Like my, my book, The De Villiers Code, which, which yeah. was, you know. Although somebody did, did complain to my publisher that I had plagiarised The Da Vinci Code. I didn't, didn't understand what parody was. <laughs> so, yeah, you do meet those people from time to time. But don't you think that happens a lot, that people read these uh, satirical websites and then don't understand that it's a joke? Right, that happens, that happens all the time. And, in fact, I've fallen for those as well, you know, especially online where the, yes. where the boundary between real news and fake news is becoming so blurred. And, frankly, a lot of the news we get it seems mad, you know, you, stuff that, that is actually real seems absurd. So, yeah, people do fall for it quite yeah. hard. Uh, there was a satirical website that once wrote, well, you know, when Nkandla first broke out to the news, yes. somebody wrote that I went for top billing to go and do a thing in Nkandla and was actually arrested for it. Well, did my Twitter feed flood with people going, free genie, I think there was a hashtag. Was. They, they genuinely thought I was jailed. So do you think South Africans are ready for this kind of humour? Well, before I answer that, I must make a confession on national TV. Genie, did you write I wrote that. that so. <laughs> 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 Thank you for sending me to bloody jail. <laughs> um, I'm free. <laughs> Stop okay. writing letters to me. <laughs> um, I think that I think that we we want to be ready. Yeah. Um, it depends who's doing the finger pointing and the laughing. Like I yeah. think that we're much more comfortable with pointing fingers uh, or, or laughing at our own little little cliques and groups. Um, once once people are pointing f fingers over fences, we get we become a lot more sensitive, and I think that's normal. I think that's how people are all over the world. Um, yeah. You know, Americans can laugh at Americans, but the moment a, a Brit laughs at Americans, Americans become super sensitive. Exactly. So I think that I think that's a standard human response. We're okay with our own family doing it, but yeah. not outside the family. Well, speaking about that kind of sensitivity, at the moment South Africa seems quite volatile with a lot of people saying things in social media. Um, but where do we draw the line between what is satire, what is freedom of speech, and what is then hate speech? Well, luckily, we have, we have legal experts that can yeah. help us draw those lines. Um, but effectively, I suppose, I mean, hate speech is, is still being defined, I think, legally in this country. There, mm. there seem to be loopholes in the law, which I think will be closed rapidly in the coming yeah. years. Um, freedom of speech is a tricky one because you get freedom of speech absolutists who say we should be allowed to say anything. But while that might follow in theory, in practice, words are actions. You know, you can't say, well, we should be allowed to say anything and if, it, if it's causing powerful real damage in the real world so Absolutely. it's really complicated but i hope in the coming years we're gonna we're gonna sort these things out much more clearly for for everyone especially at the moment where people are able to read something online and then just troll it and then it's so easy to say something hurtful when you're hiding behind your keyboard absolutely i think uh, you know trolls are trolls are slowly being tackled online mm. and more and more websites are starting to block comments and that sort of thing some yeah. websites have a great have a great response which is that you have to pay to comment yeah. And I think the moment you have to pay your, your five or ten bucks, suddenly you're a lot yeah. more careful about what you're actually saying. Exactly. Um, and also, it's, it's you speaking as yourself, not some, some you know, nameless troll yeah. in, in the... I've got absolutely no room for negativity yeah. in, in your comments online. Yeah. Like, if yeah. you've got the, t the time to sit and post something online, make it positive. Right. Or, and if it's not going to be positive, make it to create a positive exactly. response. Exactly, exactly. Or just, just have a con like be part of the conversation. Don't just stand there throwing rocks at the people having the conversation. Exactly. Yeah. So now let's chat about highboard.com. Yes. So when you wrote about me going to jail for Encanto, yes. that was with Zar News. Uh, I think so, yes. And then Highball was hugely loved, but you, you, sh you, you shuffled a few feathers. Yes, I did. Um, we, I never got sued, luckily. I don't know how. <laughs> Maybe powerful people don't read silly news. But, um, yeah, we had a couple of stories that, that were taken as gospel. And I think our biggest was a story... Um, do you remember the London riots? I think it was 2011 yeah. or... 2000, I can't quite remember when it was. 
But we did a story saying that South Af that the African Union was going to send food parcels and troops to keep the peace in London, yeah. um, and it was a kind of standard reversal of the whole you know international peacekeeping thing. And a lot of people in the UK thought it was real, um, and started discussing well how will we be able to tell you know which country will there be Nigerian troops, will there be Somali troops because we don't know, we'd prefer Kenyan troops, and the. Um, a lot of commodity traders panicked that, that South Africa was going to start sending maize and whatnot to London and unsettle commodity prices. And so even your kind of Oxbridge educated commodity yeah. traders in London ha have blind spots when it comes to fake news. But I mean, there's definitely a lesson in that. that check check your, your, your sources. Make sure yeah, that where, you, yeah. where you're reading your information online, make sure that it actually is true. Right. And it's so easy to do. It's, it's five seconds on Google. Um, yeah, and and I say that I'm I'm I must practice what I preach because sometimes you have a kind of knee-jerk reaction to news. You know, you get on Twitter and you start going wow wow, and then you go hang on, maybe I should check. And I have I have fallen for a few things. Yeah, and so we've got the cast of Paul Paul for my darling yes. here, and obviously this is a parody a parody on you know, the, the, the Afrikaans people. Do you think South Africa is ready to to laugh at ourselves? Well, I think again it comes back to who's doing the laughing. You know, and yeah. I think that I mean I'm I'm. I have Afrikaans, my mom is Afrikaans, my dad is English speaking, so yeah. I, I have a foot in both camps. And I know that both sides get very touchy when the other starts pointing fingers. Exactly. So, you know, in family, to family discussions can quickly degenerate into who is responsible for the Boer War. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I think in this film... Watching rugby must be exciting rough. at your house. <laughs> so, yeah, look, I think that we, comedy can be universal. Like, you know, if something is genuinely funny, everybody will laugh at it. Exactly. So it, it depends on... on what the spirit of the comedy is. If it's mean-spirited, yeah. people will be unhappy, but this film seems to be generously comedic. Yeah. And so I think that, I think, yeah, I think people will be ready to laugh at that. But it also depends who's telling the joke. I mean, right. I, I watched Anchorman 2 last night, and <laughs> that guy is the most offensive human <laughs> on the planet. Tom Eaton, thank you so much for joining thank us. You very much. And be sure to follow this guy on Twitter. He's amazing. Right now, though, let's cross back to Danilo. As you guys saw early on in the show, Ginny's outfit was so good, it broke our TV screen. So let's try this all over again. Now, if there's one day on the fashions calendar that you simply cannot miss, it's the 2016 Met at Kenilworth Racecourse, happening in Cape Town on Saturday, the 30th of January. This year's theme is a rare blend, invoking unique combinations, surprising contradictions, and naturally collaborations. So today, let's meet Ginny's fashion house of choice, Michael Maven. It takes a unique pairing to make a rare blend, and that's why I'm collaborating with the team from Michael Maven for a unique look for the 2016 Met. Now, this is a global brand based in South Africa, and if it's good enough for Kendall Jenner, well... Streetwear label Michael Maven defines their style as a blend of minimalism and understated luxury. So the theme of this year's Met is a rare blend. And I've got a big personality and I'm always known for wearing quite out there outfits to the Met. So I thought a great rare blend would be us collaborating because you guys are quite simple in your form and in your color where I'm quite... So if we marry the two together, I think we can make some magic. I think so too, Jeannie. I mean, Michael, really excited. Yeah, Michael yeah. Maven's all about, you know, very minimal. Um, we love a crisp look. We're all about the woman, you know, uh, making a woman feel beautiful. In, in, and in enhancing your female form, basically. So I thought I'd bring a little bit of inspiration to the table. And I thought, what would inspire my look for the Met? So I was thinking, my first love at the moment. I'm amazed I don't have a permanently sore finger from scrolling through Instagram because I'm absolutely obsessed with social media pop culture, and I think that is definitely my lead for the look that I want to go for. Well, I think in terms of fashion right now, Instagram especially is leading the way. If you look at Instagram accounts that are really fashion forward, you see a lot of muted tones, a lot of monochromatics. Very minimalist, um, Very minimalist. playing with a lot of shapes and basically accentuating the female form. Well, luckily I have a lot of form. <laughs> I really want to look completely different to how I've usually looked before in the past. I definitely think for the Met we need to still show a few assets, um, but we still want to keep it quite minimal and kind of incorporating that sports luxe feel into it. So taking the minimal aspect with your sexiness and your feminine, femininity and just blending it into one, I think it would work really nicely. Now, what are your thoughts on colour? 
right now what's really trending are muted tones you see a lot of camels a lot, a lot of, of black a lot of white exactly you want to stay away from like you know bold oh. pops of color anyway. yeah. and i think against your tan it would look really good as well i think in the heat as well nice you know light cool colors would look yes. good on you so um that's definitely the direction mm. we should go well i'm absolutely in love with this is going i'm looking forward to seeing you next week to see what you come up with Stay tuned as modern minimalism is combined with Jeannie's sexy style to create a rare blend. Now this is going to be one hot event. If you want to show off your rare blend of fashion at the 2016 Met, we're giving away an amazing VVIP experience to one lucky viewer and a partner worth 24,000 Rand. The prize includes flights, accommodation and all transfers for the weekend to enjoy the 2016 Met in VVIP style. Simply SMS the keyword Met along with your name and city to 33728 and it could be you. Now remember SMSs cost one Rand 50 T's and C's apply and are available on our website. You can go check out more details there. In the meantime, though, Bonnie's back in the kitchen making something delish. <laughs> Thank you, Danilo. I think Jeannie's gonna look absolutely exquisite, but our mealies look just as amazing. So let's do part two. So you want to okay. come over this side? Okay. So we're playing with fire, and I'm being realistic. It's you and I in the kitchen. Okay. Fire Whoa! Okay, I'm just Bring being out real. The big guns, I'm just being real. Baby. So you want to come around okay. this side? You're okay. going to give me a hand. I'm going to give you one, the beautiful little um, braided corn that you've done for me. Okay. And all we're going to do is carefully now directly over the plate. We could actually just rest it down on the bars. How's that? This is so Careful, much keep fun. your hand away. There we go. Now, if it's if you don't have a gas flame at home, uh. you can easily do this in a dry pan over a high heat. And you can see how quick that is. Oh, wow, so yeah. you've got to make sure you keep on turning. I do have a so gas stove at home, burn. so that'll, that'll be fun. Another I didn't think I could do this with it. Of course, I mean, it adds that smoky flavor. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. besides being on trend, it's just amazing. Smoke My anything. My man's not burning. I think I'm being extra cautious. There we go. Oh, oops. Let's see how you're doing. Yeah, Look at that. You've got something happening. So also, this is an amazing braai side if you're braaiing um, right. directly onto the grid. And look at that. So that's mine's looking good. How are you feeling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm cool. feeling so good. You this keep is on going. Fun. I'm going to go on to the next step. So oh we've got goodness, all our so charred fun. corn. Look at that. Look at that. And oh, all we've wow. done is we've glazed it in some melted butter. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that's going to help all our toppings stick to it. Yes. We're not going to use I any... I switched it off. What happened? It okay. just means you're done. So look <laughs> at that side. Okay. So now we've got chilies. Okay. And I'm using, once again, I'm using red. It's a TV red. stove. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Red and green chilies. And if you're wondering why it looks funny, it's because it's frozen. Or it okay. was frozen. Okay. Hot Studio Lights is not frozen anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the idea is that we're going to grate the chili... And over it falls the, the millie. over the millies, uh -huh. like that. And not only is our chili frozen, but we've also, you see what I mean? There we ah. go. We've frozen the feta. Why? We've frozen the feta, why? So that you can grate it. There we go. We're doing feta snow. I'm so impressed with you. Yeah, and we, yeah you see. You are slaying. And we are not using any salt today because feta is quite salty. Because yes, yes, of course. There we go. So we just keep on turning so we know that we're going to get the feta over it evenly. And you're probably using some salted butter, right? Exactly. Yeah, so yeah. no need for okay. extra salt. Okay. So look at that. It looks literally like feta snow. Oh, wow. And it's as fun to make as to eat because, I mean, the feta gets everywhere. And that's, that's amazing. So mm. feta's on there, so chili's lovely. on there. And now, just to finish it off, fresh coriander, stems okay. and leaves. Love coriander, love coriander. Lots, lots, lots. Okay. And don't kill it, just like a rough chop, <laughs> sprinkle, <laughs> and some lime. Some lime. Just you to bring out all those flavors. That looks absolutely amazing. Doesn't it? I mean, it's amazing. It does. And then you got the handles there on the husks that you use just to like pick it up, yeah. get feta all over your face. Yeah. Why not? It just makes me want to apply that laughter sunscreen. <laughs> 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 Pop over to our website, afternoonexpress.co.za for the full recipe and shopping list. <laughs> we'll see you after the break. Willies and I collaborating to raise 100 million rand through the My School program. Are you with us? Salati Plantation Select adds subtle sweetness to toffees, caramel, bran muffins, or sprinkled into a spicy curry. Salati, always good, always sweet. Welcome back to 
Afternoon Express. We have such fantastic guests in our love today. The cast from Paul Paul for my darling, mm -hmm. Stuart Taylor. We had Tom Eaton in here. And then Danilo, who's just making sure we get all of the laughter we need. <laughs> <laughs> Creep! Guys, this looks amazing. It How does, cool does that does look? look? I had so much fun making it. We actually mm. tried it on the gas stove. I know. I must oh, wow. be honest. When I found out that you were going to be cooking with an open flame... You were nervous. Uh, no, I, that, go and have a look. Oh, no, There's a know. fire extinguisher. <laughs> <laughs> Did you put that there? Yeah, so crazy. well. Oh, Safety sorry. first. Hey? Did you enjoy the laughter therapy? I did, I did. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep doing that. You're gonna keep doing that. I love this. that idea that it doesn't matter whether it's fake or whether it's real. It's that so it actually good. does the same thing. Exactly. Please, please that's my, that's that's my view be, on the world. Yeah, that's, and he's going to start giving real. yoga lessons yeah. too. I am. So does I that am. give you permission now? Because I need permission. Because I'm one of those kids who laughs at his own jokes. I'm funny. I'm really <laughs> funny. You've got so permission. So I want to know now. I have permission to laugh at my own jokes because it's good for my health. I can say it. And we can now fake laugh. We can now fake laugh and stay young. All I want to say then, in other words, people watching Popo for my darling, if you laugh, is it real or is it fake? It'll be they real They must laugh just do the cream. They must just do the cream. Just just the cream. <laughs> but you know, there is a theory behind it. I read this little meme that said, uh, it, you know, that the secret to being happy is just be. So make a conscious decision every day to oh, just absolutely. be happy. So if just you've got happy. to maybe give a little bit of a fake laugh here and there, mm -hmm. I mean, you're not hurting anybody. <laughs> Rather that than throwing shade. <laughs> <laughs> You're not bullshitting yourself either. What? <laughs> <laughs> live TV, my darling. Live TV. We cannot do that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank you so much to all of our guests for coming through. It was absolutely hysterical having mm -hmm. you there. You're having you here. Stuart Taylor, hopefully we're going to see you soon at the Baxter. Yes, when at is the your Baxter show Theatre. Don't forget, in February we bring the show. Dale and Oliver's I Came, I Taught, I Left. It's not my show. I'm Fabulous. directing it. But mm. I, I feel like it's my I've baby. I've seen it. It's right. phenomenal. There and, we go. of course, we've all got to get to the cinema to go and watch Paul Paul for yeah. my darling. Absolutely. Now remember yeah. that yeah. Afternoon Express will be off air from tomorrow due to the cricket. Aww. But don't fear because we're back on your screens again on next week Tuesday and we hope you're all going to support the Proteas as they take on England in the third test at Wanderers in Joburg. Woo! Best of luck Proteas. Let's laugh off Otherwise, this day. Bye-bye. <laughs> 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 Happy Easter. Good night. Bye. Happy Easter. <laughs> Happy Easter. <laughs> <laughs>